Let's decide which of these three categories this molecule falls into. Which of these three categories does this molecule fall into? Is it completely conjugated? Well, what's the hybridization of this atom, this atom at the top? That's an sp3 atom, right? This is just a normal sp3 carbon. This atom at the top is an sp3 atom. The exception that we learned earlier doesn't apply here because this doesn't have any lone pairs. No lone pairs, so it's just a normal sp3 atom. So, does this atom have any p orbitals? No. That's something else that we've learned. sp3 atoms don't have any p orbitals left because they've already used them all up to make the four sp3 orbitals. So this does not have any unhybridized p orbitals left, so they can't possibly be completely conjugated. Remember that completely conjugated means overlapping p orbitals at every atom in the ring. Well, since there is no p orbital over here, there's, this atom does not have an overlapping p orbital, so this is not completely conjugated. It's partially conjugated. We're conjugated down here. Down here on these four atoms, we have overlapping p orbitals, but um, our definition here involves completely conjugated. So this molecule is not completely conjugated. So that means we're in this category over here, not completely conjugated. Uh, since it's not completely conjugated, it's non-aromatic. Again, because this molecule is not completely conjugated, it's non-aromatic. Notice that we didn't even have to bother counting the pi electrons. You only have to count the pi electrons if you know you're going to be in one of these two categories over here. Uh, but if you know that um, the, if the molecule is not completely conjugated, it doesn't matter how many pi electrons there are, it's automatically non-aromatic. Only if you already know that the molecule is completely conjugated and cyclic, only then do you have to count the number of pi electrons. Okay, um, so now we're ready to finally get to the point of counting the pi electrons. Uh, in order to do that, we have to know what are pi electrons. What are pi electrons? Pi electrons are electrons that are in overlapping p orbitals. Pi electrons are electrons in overlapping p orbitals. The pi electrons are the electrons in the side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. So they're not the electrons in any old p orbitals. They have to be uh, p orbitals with side-to-side -side overlap. Uh, they're the electrons in side-to-side uh, -side overlapping uh, p orbitals. By the way, pi is the Greek letter for p. So you can see why that was chosen for these types of electrons. Since these electrons are in p orbitals, it makes sense to use the Greek letter pi for those electrons. Please copy this definition down, uh, because in a second I'm going to erase it so we can look at some examples. Let's decide which of these three categories this molecule falls into. Aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. Give that a shot. Well, is it completely conjugated? Yes. All of the atoms are sp2 hybridized, so they all have p orbitals. Uh, p orbitals in every atom in the ring. So it's completely conjugated, so we know we're either in the aromatic or anti-aromatic uh, situation here. Uh, obviously, the molecule is cyclic, and like I said, we're just going to basically assume that all the cyclic compounds we're looking at are flat. So we won't talk much more about that. Now we have to count how many pi electrons there are. Well, remember that the pi electrons are in the p orbitals. The pi electrons are in the p orbitals. So what is this, what is this carbon using its p orbital for? Well, you should already know from the first semester of OCHEM that it's using its p orbital to form this pi bond over here. We know from the first semester of OCHEM that any time we have a double bond, one of the bonds is a sigma bond and one of them is a pi bond. Uh, and clearly a pi bond is made out of side-to-side -side overlap of p orbitals. So again, this carbon is using a p orbital 
for this electron over here for its pi bond. This carbon over here again has a pi bond, so it's using its p orbital for this electron. Uh, this carbon over here is using its p orbital for this electron in the pi bond. These two are, electrons are also in a pi bond, so they're also pi electrons. And this carbon is using its p orbital for this electron in the pi bond. So those are all of the pi electrons here. All of the other electrons here are not in p orbitals, because I've just accounted for all the p orbitals, so there's no other pi electrons here. So how many do we have here? We have six pi electrons. Well, that falls into this list over here. Um, so this must be aromatic. Now, of course, you really should already have known this because obviously this is benzene, which is the most famous example of an aromatic compound. But now we've just confirmed that this really is aromatic using Coco's rule. Let's decide which of these three categories this molecule falls into. It is completely conjugated because all the atoms are sp2, including this atom at the top, which is also sp2. So there's a p orbital everywhere, so it's completely conjugated. Uh, and let's find the pi electrons. Well, here's a pi bond, so those are pi electrons. Here's a pi bond, so those are pi electrons. This atom is sp2, so it has a p orbital. Uh, but um, what's in the p orbital? Nothing. Because it's a carbocation, there are no electrons in the p orbital, so this p orbital is empty. So this carbon is not contributing any pi electrons. Uh, so overall we have one, two, three, four pi electrons. Four pi electrons, that puts us in this list, so this molecule is anti-aromatic. This is an example of an anti-aromatic compound. Let's decide which of the three categories this molecule falls into. Is it completely conjugated? Well, what's the hybridization of this carbon over here? Well, using the exception that we've now learned, we know that this carbon is sp2. Normally it would be sp3, but because it has a lone pair and it's connected to an sp2 atom, we now know using our exception that this is an sp2 atom as well. So all the atoms are sp2, so they all have p orbitals. So this is completely conjugated. How many pi electrons do we have? Well, we have the pi bonds. Those are contributing pi electrons. And this carbon has a p orbital. Uh, what's it putting in its p orbital? Well, it's going to put the lone pair in its p orbital. I'll circle those then to show that those are also pi electrons here. So again, because this lone pair is in the p orbital, uh, they also count as pi electrons. So how many pi electrons are there? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That puts us in this list. So this compound is aromatic. Which category is this molecule in? Is it completely conjugated? Does it have an sp2 everywhere? Yes. This nitrogen is sp2 because he has a lone pair and he's connected to an sp2 atom. So it's also sp2. So everything is sp2, so this is completely conjugated. We have some pi bonds. Each of the pi bonds contributes two pi electrons. And then we know this nitrogen is sp2, so it has a p orbital. What's it doing with its p orbital? Well, it'll put the lone pair in the p orbital. So I'll circle the lone pair to show that this lone pair is also counting as pi electrons because it's also in a p orbital. So how many pi electrons do we have? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six pi electrons overall. That's in this list, so this compound is also aromatic.